Hi folks, I'm Richard Friedman and welcome to my political cartoon countdown for January 20th, 2022. I want to welcome you folks and tell you all about myself. For many years I was a high school math teacher, taught the algebra geometry, and I retired and I started doing political cartoons and got into writing books. Uh, when Just about the time when President Trump, uh, when uh, Donald Trump became president, and so I've written a number of books, and every time, every every uh, time we we get together like this, I always like to reminisce about the, this date, a year, two, three years ago. So I, this is a book from my twenty. This is my twenty twenty book. You can order this book off my website, Richard's Books of Political Cartoons dot com, and you could you could also, um, well, you can see all my latest uh, all my books and sample cartoons it's like a free t ticket to a political disney world and you could also go to uh richard freeman's amazon author book page in uh in amazon richard freeman's amazon author book and you'll see all the songs i've done i've written songs to some of my cartoons and my books are there too so that's richard freeman richard freeman's Amazon author page, Richard Friedman's Amazon author page. Just hook that up, and uh, if you ever want to buy my books, the folks at Amazon are real good. They'll ship it right out to you. And so, anyway, here is the uh, my 2020 book, and this is today is a sample. Today is January 20th, and here's a sample. Here's a cartoon from January 20th, 2020. Here it goes. Okay, here we got Alex. Alexander, Alexander Hamilton coming back to do a tweet, okay, in response to what was going on then. Okay, I'll read real quick to you. Alexander Hamilton responds on Twitter to Trump impeachment attorney Alan Dershowitz, who has advised, Alan Dershowitz is a, a well-known attorney, written a lot of, wrote a lot of books, very strong supporter of Trump. I don't know what, where he stands today, but he had been a very strong supporter uh, to uh, then President Trump. And at the time, he uh, had offered to defend him. I don't know how, I don't think it went through, but he was there at a time. Alan Dershowitz, who has advised Trump to go for a very short constitutional defense focusing on the inadequacies of the two impeachment charges given Dershowitz, Dershowitz's narrow position that a president cannot be impeached for merely jeopardizing America's security in favor of a foreign enemy nation without a specific charge in the ballpark of the perhaps most misleading phrase in the U.S. Constitution, high crimes and misdemeanors, quote, because therefore, according to Dershowitz, any bribery allegation to be impeachable would have to be defined by specific criminal statutes and punishable in criminal courts. So that's a quote from him. What that basically means is that there's no statute for uh, pre uh, then there were the thing with the Ukraine. This involved the Ukraine, and uh, he he, uh, he 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 can't he can't really be held uh, liable. There's no specific without a specific statute. Uh, so, so that's his that defense, you know. But you never find a specific statute for President Trump because there's never been a president like Tr President Trump. So, it, it's it's like a catch twenty two there. You know, okay. So Alexander Alexander Hamilton picks up on Dershowitz, and he and he uh, responds in a tweet to Dershowitz here, to Alexander Hamilton, and he says, "America, don't get pissed off at me because Dershowitz invoked my Federalist Papers. Trump's defense attorney never said I I also wrote in 1792." that the Republic remained vulnerable to the rise of an unscrupulous demagogue. Back in the early fall of 1780, I caught General Benedict Arnold, the new commander of West Point, who had sold out to the British, planning to turn over the fort. If Dershowitz had caught him, he might have advised Arnold to run for higher office. Imagine Pre President Benedict Arnold. Okay, so that was January, here it is. January 20th. Here. January 20th, 
we've got to give Alexander, Alexander Hamilton a chance to respond. And everybody's quoting him so much, you know, we got to give him a chance, so I gave him a chance to respond. All right. This is my latest book, uh, right public out now. My next book will be coming out in a couple of weeks for the second half of 2021. And um, this is it with all the people on the cover, everything like that. You see all the political characters. Okay. And uh, you see here we got, uh, here is a little uh, Munchkin Joe. I used to call him Munchkin Joe. Okay, I don't want to go into these cartoons too much because this, this is, uh, I want to get to today's cartoons of today. But just to give you an overview, here is Ted Cruz. Here's Lindsey Graham. And there's Mansion again in front of the Capitol. Filibuster USA. The American flag. There's the Trump's Attorney General Barr in front of the Justice Department. There's a former tre President Trump zipping a, a large, super large Pepsi because he called Coke the woke Coke because they were against they the. Um, Trump Pepsi TV ad following the former president marking Easter weekend by proposing a boycott on Coca-Cola, expressed his support of Georgia's legislation of restrictive voting. Because Coca-Cola came out, they were against what Georgia was doing, and they're in Atlanta, Georgia, Coca-Cola is based. So President then President Trump was saying, we have to boycott Coke, woke Coke, you know, we have to boycott them. So then I have him here drinking a, a Pepsi, he goes switching over to Pepsi, and he says here, never give up, join the Pepsi challenge, no more diet liberal stuff. Stay healthy and strong. See, and there he's drinking that whole bottle. Stay healthy and strong. <laughs> okay, that was the first half. Second, like I said, the second half of this book will be coming out in a few weeks. Okay, all right. Let's get to the, the cartoon countdown, folks. Get right into it. Here we have. This is a cartoon I haven't put up on Twitter anywhere. You know, this is this is a, a world premiere. A world premiere cartoon just recently happened. See, so just just finished it up a few minutes ago, actually. You know. So anyway, I'll, I'll kind of read it to you. It just happened this too. Former President Trump Supreme Court dream, with mathematician Douglas Frank arguing for the court to reverse its ruling that denied his bid to block release of records. See, this this Douglas Frank now. He's come up with a new mathematical theory that he says prove. That proves that Trump won the election. He has a, uh, a this uh, polynomial to the sixth to the sixth sixth uh, order form uh, equation that he's been going around with. And so I, I was a former math teacher, so I see this. You know, I mean, I can't can't let this go. <laughs> you know, because that's what I used to do. All these equations, graphing them and factoring and all that kind of stuff in my classroom, teaching kids how to factory equations and, and all and solve for x and then uh, you know setting up the whole thing so this came this came right natural to me to go into this a little bit so here we go so anyway former president trump's supreme court dream with mathematician douglas frank arguing for the court to reverse its ruling that denied his bid to block release of records that could shed light on events that led to the riot by Trump supporters protesting the results of the 2020 presidential election. So the Supreme Court just came down with a decision that denied Trump the right to withhold the, the uh, information about all whatever recordings or memos, whatever it was, from, from his interactions then around January 6th, leading up to the Capitol riot. So the, the, the committee, the select committee, is interested in looking all, at all that stuff. So they're finally getting all, going to get a hold, a hold on that. That should be a real, so this week should be really something coming up, you know. So to so, the so riot of Trump supporters protesting the results of the presidential. Frank presenting this sixth order polynomial, polynomial equation to prove just about every county in the country was hacked. 
and because he's saying every county, his proof, his equation proves that every county at the exact moment in time when all this is going on, every single county in the country, practically, practically, you know. So, so maybe it was Mayberry, USA, somewhere, a little town someplace that didn't get hacked, you know. So, oh, because of Barney Fife, you know, he, he, he caught it right away. But anyway, uh, Sheriff, or, you know, or RMB, or, uh, or whatever you want to just joke about it. So, anyway, the sixth order polynomial equation to prove just about every county in the country was hacked. At that moment in time, just at that moment, they, they, they zoomed in on every county. At that particular moment, imagine, and therefore President Trump's actions merit executive privilege because President Trump was acting in the best interest of the country, trying to protect the elections. And so whatever he did then is confidential because, for, because he, he was acting to protect the country in his capacity as president. So therefore, it's privilege, it's privileged information, and all that stuff that, that the court ruled had to come out. He's arguing here, it goes back the second day after he got that decision, that would be today, perhaps, going back today to the Supreme Court with this mathematician to argue before the Supreme Court that that should be reversed that reverse the decision and vote and, and vote to uh, President Trump's, then President, former President Trump's right to withhold the information based on executive privilege. Okay, so here we got the setup for the cartoon, and here we got the, the dream, is his former president dreaming, about it. maybe he dreamt about it last night, that's what I'm saying here. Okay, here he is, dreaming about this. Okay, and here goes number one in the cartoon, here goes President Trump. He's saying this, and he's in front, in front of the Supreme Court, okay? And he's saying, honorable justices, this man who has the most tremendous mathematical brain since Albert Einstein will represent me today, meaning Douglas, okay? Uh, meaning uh, Frank, Douglas Frank, okay? He's gone all over the country. He's, gotten, he's on all TV now. He's, very, he's getting very famous with his, all his theories and everything, you know? I think he, uh, he I don't know if he's, he's come out with a book yet. <laughs> I don't know about that, but he might. He's coming out once, once pretty soon. Who knows, you know? A, a mathematical textbook, you know, where we could teach children in school how President Trump won the election, you know, a new mathemat mathematical course, you know? Trump Mathematics 101, <laughs> you know? Could be, could happen, who knows, right? So here we go. So that's it. So here he goes, brains. So he's introducing him, Douglas Frank, here to the Supreme Court. He's in, former President Trump is introducing him here to, to the Supreme Court. Okay, and here's Douglas Frank here. And he's got his, this is his equation. This is the equation that he's come up with. You know, this is like, like a cosine curve of some sort. <laughs> <You know? laughs> So here, here, here he's got this, okay, I'm glorifying it by calling it a cosine curve, you know. So anyway, here it is. So here it, here it is. Okay, and here we go. And then, then here he makes his argument, okay. There he goes. Douglas Frank, the great mathematician before the Supreme Court, makes his argument. And he's saying, here he goes, and he's saying, any justices have any questions about how this, my polynomial equation, there it is, a polynomial equation, that's it, my polynomial equation supports President Trump, raise your hand. And then here comes Justice Clarence Thomas, raises his hand out of the Supreme Court. See, there goes his hand. That's the hand of Justice Supreme, uh, Just Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, raising the only justice who voted in favor of Trump uh, to, to withhold the information. The other just the only one who voted in favor of holding back the information. Okay? So even Trump justices voted for, for releasing the information. So Clarence Thomas was the only basically real diehard Trump loyalist on the Supreme Court. You know, he gets that distinctive honor, I guess you could say, in some, in some circles. You know, <laughs> okay, so there we go. So anyway, so he goes, you raise your hand, and he goes, yes, Justice Clarence Thomas. And here goes Justice Clarence Thomas here. There's his hand coming out of, out of the window there. And he, Justice Clarence Thomas says, can your sixth order polynomial equation be solved by factoring? 
Okay, I'm not going to give you an algebra lesson. Well, factoring was you, we have x squared minus 4 plus, plus 4x four, four minus 6, and then you, you take it, and there's a formula a way to factor a, a, a quadratic equation. But this is to the sixth degree, but it still could be factored theoretically. So, so anyway, so, so, so basically, he's saying, can it be factored? And he said, can, can it be fact? Can your sixth order polynomial equation be solved? Be solved by factoring, because that's how you solve a quadratic. You factor it, and then you make two separate equations, and you equate x equals so and so, and x equals so and so. There's usually two solutions to a, a, a quadratic equation. You see, so you by, by factoring, you get one, and then you and you, on the other side, you, the other the other equation is the second solution. For you solve for x. Okay, <laughs> so so anyway, so that was that. So then, so then he answers back. He answers back. Uh, D uh, Douglas Frank answers answers uh, Supreme Court Supreme Court Justice uh, back. He answers him back, and he says um, basically he's saying here yes, it can be solved and proven. Okay, so so then you have here. He's saying, excellent. Can't argue with mathematics. Okay? So he's saying, can't argue with mathematics. So that, that was that. Clarence Thomas can't argue with math, good mathematics. He's saying he cannot argue with good mathematics. There it is. Can't argue with Good mathematics. Excellent. Okay. There it is. Excellent. Can't argue with good mathematics. Okay. Well, he studied law. He wasn't. He never studied math. He wasn't deep into math mathematics. He studied law. Went to law school for sure. So he's not a mathematician. But he's saying he's confident that this guy's mathematical experience and everything. He says he calls it good mathematics. So there he goes. So he's going to get. He's going to be, be, be the, another, another vote. We'll see what happens when he comes to this. Okay, hypothetically speaking. Okay, there we go. There was the. Uh, there was it. The Supreme Court. Former President Trump. The dream. He's lying there dreaming. Supreme Court. And there is Douglas Frank, the great mathematician, the greatest mathematician from, as former Trump says in this cartoon, since Albert Einstein. There he is. And there, and there is the equation. That's the that's the that's the sixth the sixth order equation polynomial sixth order polynomial equation that he's showing them. All right, well, <laughs> okay, folks. I don't know how that'll do, but anyway. Okay, here's something now. With, uh, President Joe Biden sings his own lyrics to the song Sandy. Now, I did a song on this. If you want to see a song, you can go to Richard Friedman's author, author page on Amazon. Richard Friedman's Amazon author page. And there you'll see me singing this song with, with, with the instrumental in the background to Sandy from from Greece, I think it was 1977 when this movie was made with, uh, with uh, Olivia Newton-John and John Travolta. John Travolta sang the song. I'm no John Travolta, but but I, I try my best. <laughs> so I, I sang the song with the instrumental in the background. So you can see that again, where I said it's, it's Richard Friedman's Amazon author, author page. Richard Friedman's Amazon author page. Richard Friedman's Amazon author. That's it. So many things to remember. <laughs> you know, it's Richard Books at politicalcartoons.com. That's for my books if you want to, you know, look at sample books and stuff. Okay, so this is, I did this, and now I'm going to sing it out again without the instrumental. So it's not going to be nothing like you'll see, you would see if you saw it. Okay, so here it goes. President Joe Biden, and this is very interesting. President Joe Biden sings his own lyrics to his song, Sandy. Now he's substituting here for Sandy. He's going to substitute Stacey Abrams because Stacey Abrams stood him up in Atlanta. She didn't show because she felt, him. I mean, she made the statement, people were making the statement that Biden, President Biden should stay in Washington and work for voting rights rather than to go on a tour, a, a bus tour all over the place. And he should concentrate on getting the job done rather than political, you know, political goodwill. 
So she felt that way, but her, her reasoning for not going, her official reasoning was that she had a, a scheduling conflict, okay? And when she ran for election, she basically, uh, she did not, um, she said when she ran for election, she, she did not concede. You know, she accepted her loss, but she did not concede in Georgia for governor because um, the uh, Brian Kemp was the Secretary of State then, and he controlled the election, and he was also running for governor at the same time. So he took about, about 500,000, uh, this is what I uh, reportedly took off, 500,000 voters from the re voter register, from the voting lists, and, and, the, and there were other things there, and she felt that, that, uh, that someone may not have been justified, because that's, that's a pretty big number. I don't think it's ever, they say it was a record for the for a voter taking out, taking out voter, uh, for taking vote names off a of voting list. It's a record of some sort. You know, maybe it was in the Guinness Book of World Records. I don't know, but that's what reportedly they wrote. So anyway, so so this is the backdrop backdrop to this uh, this uh, cartoon. Okay, President Joe Biden sings his own lyrics to the song "Sandy," sung by John Travolta in Greece, amid Stacey Abrams. Now again, Georgia's Democratic gubernatorial candidate leaves Biden stranded in Atlanta, given the president's visit there was to push for voting rights legislation, which would create national voting standards in line with aspects of the Voting Rights Act of 1965. And Biden changing the title of the song from Sandy to Stacy. And Stacy in 2018 did not concede in Georgia. So here it goes, here goes the song. Here goes, here's President Biden. And I'm gonna sing the song as, as it, in the same tune as it was, as, as he sang, Travolta sang, Sandy, you, okay, you left me, Stranded, stranded, or stranded at a drive-in, branded a fool. What will they say Monday at school? Oh, Sandy, can't you see? So that was the song from Greece. So I adapted it to, to this situation here. And so, so Biden, here's President Biden singing it. There he goes, and he sings. Stranded in Atlanta, branded a fool. What Mitch McConnell will say won't be cool. Stacy, can't you see? I'm in misery. We made a start for voting rights. Now we're apart. I stand here and wonder why, why you left me. Oh, Stacy. Oh, Stacy. Maybe someday as Georgia's governor with you in Atlanta forever and ever, you will support my bill back better. Stacy, my darling, you hurt me real bad. You know it's true. But Stacy, I'm still going to say you scheduled things to do. Oh, Stacy, there goes the song, and that was it. There's, there's, there's President Biden singing the song in Atlanta, looking for Stacy. Where is Stacy? Where can we find Stacy? Where is she? Let's see. Where is she? Where is she? Where is, where is Stacy? I don't see Stacy anywhere. I'm looking around. Where is Stacy? Okay, <laughs> that was, that was that. Okay, and here, here's another singing cartoon. Um, that I haven't done yet, I'm going to, hopefully. And this is Lindsey Graham, okay? And Senator Lindsey Graham, Republican South Carolina, sings his own lyrics to the threatening 1963 song, My Boyfriend's Back, by, sung by the Angels in 1963. I'm old, some of you may not have been born then, but I remember that song. My boyfriend's back and you're gonna be troubled. Hey, la, 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 my boyfriend's back. You've been, tell, spend, spend, you've been spreading lies that I've been untrue. Hey, la, my boy, now he's back and things will, will you're gonna be through something like that, you know? You're gonna be sorry you were ever born because he's kind of big and he's awful strong, all that stuff, you know? And so, and he's coming after you, so it was all that. And then, and that was a quite a successful song, very big hit for the Angels in 1963. So here it goes. My boyfriend's back, sung by the Angels to Republican leader Mitch McConnell from Kentucky, given Graham has threatened to not back his leadership for another term. So Lindsey Graham, he don't care what, whether, this, is, this has nothing to do with Mitch McConnell in a way. This is like a principle. Even if he was a, the greatest senator in the world and he worked with the Democrats and he, and he helped get tons of legislation passed, which he did not, he did the exact opposite until this last one when he helped out with the, um, with the, um, uh, the, the uh, you know, that the program was basically to, to build back, but it was build, building back the, the infrastructure the infrastructure bill, which had nothing to do with sociological 
uh, the other bill was the Biden Build Back Better. This was the infrastructure bill that had that had bipartisan support from both Democrats and Republicans in the past. So I mean, McConnell supported that. This is the first thing he ever, first time, first time, you know. You know, everybody supports somebody sometime. You know, <laughs> Steve Martin. <laughs> okay. So anyway, so here we go. Senator Lindsey Graham, Republican South Carolina, sings his own lyrics to the threatening 1963 hit song. He's saying, no matter what, he's thinking, he's not thinking of the country, he's thinking of the party. Lindsey Graham here, he's, he's practically coming forward. He said, I don't, he's, he's, his message here is, I don't, I, I care more about the party. Somebody who's loyal to Donald Trump and, 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 and make an America first agenda, which is saying to screw the world, we don't want to cooperate with this, we're not going to go for alliances, we're not going to go for, for, for we're only looking out for America first. So anybody who doesn't think like that is not with, uh, hasn't got a relationship with Trump. He can't qualify. So that 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 that, that shows you how we how far we've gone here. That we've, you know, I mean, I, I mean, I don't know. I go back to the Roman Empire. I don't think anybody was thinking about the Roman Empire when they were killing each other. You know, at the steps of all these, uh, you know, on the steps of all, of all these monuments. You know, we're losing something here. We're losing a lot because if I. So, and Lindsey Graham is no, he's, he's a big shot there, I mean. So a lot of people follow Lindsey Graham in his own right. He's got a lot of followers, you know, and he wields a lot of power. So there you go. There you got it, right there. That's the whole, that's soup and nuts, from, 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 from soup to nuts. That's, that's the story there, right? That one, that one thing here. So anyway, I am not going to vote for anybody for leader of the Senate as a Republican unless they can prove to me they can advocate, quote, an America first agenda and have a working relationship with Donald Trump. Okay. So so this is now he's threatening him in a way. So I'd use the, the same type of song of from the Angels, my boyfriend's back and you're gonna be trouble. So I use the same type of tune for this for this cartoon I wrote. Lindsay's singing this to Mitch McConnell. Okay, there's Mitch McConnell. He's getting a little worried there sitting there listening to the song from Lindsey Graham. Okay. There goes Lindsay. He's got the mic there and the thumbs up. There goes Lindsay. Here he goes. Trump went away and you hung around and you were on the news every night saying bad things about Trump. You said things that weren't very nice. My Trump is coming back in 24 and you're going to be in trouble. You see him in Kentucky, better cut out on the double. He's from, he's from Kentucky. Mitch McConnell, Mitch McConnell is a senator from Kentucky for a long time. That's his, that's his state, Kentucky. So that's how I, I came back. Such, so, so, so you see him in Kentucky, better cut out on the double. He's been gone from the presidency for such a long time. Now he's coming back and our democracy will be fine. You're going to have a loser reputation. If I were you, I'd take a Senate vacation. Hey, la, de, la, my Trump is back. Yeah, my Trump is back. And that, there it goes. And there it goes, Lindsay. My Trump is back. My Trump is back. Hey, la, 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 my Trump is back. You're going to be sorry. You, you ever spoke against Trump? Hey, la, la, la. He's kind of big and he's awful strong. <laughs> I'm going. I'm taking the song. Okay, there it is. Okay, I don't want the. I don't want the angels coming after me for using their song. <laughs> I'd have to get a copyright and all that business. So there it is. There's Lindsey Graham, and there is Mitch McConnell. Say okay. <laughs> okay, folks. Hope you're enjoying this. Okay, now here we have Kim Jong Un story. He's launching hypersonic. A missile now they say he claims his uh, his uh, state uh, media claim that he uh, other missiles these short-range missiles that he's launching over the sea of Japan you know that people aren't getting too upset I think uh, the people here in America the president and you know the uh, Department of our defense Department get more upset when they talk he starts launching hypersonics and so, or saying the, the State Department his uh, state media reports hypersonics so so anyway, the other day I heard that they had to keep planes grounded on the West Coast because they didn't know if the hypersonic would, would come into our territory and knock down the plane. So they were a little worried about that, you know. You know, you know so, so the North Koreans have come, have come far, come very far. You know, they have much food, but they come far with their, with their, with their weapon program. So, you know, 
So here, here is the, here is the thing here. So here he is, and this was an actual photo I drew, and here is President Trump watching this, and this is there goes the, there goes the hi, hi, supposedly hypersonic, there goes uh, going off Korea there, it's, it's going up, and there there is Japan here, you see, and the, these are these are two uh, officials. Uh, these are two officials here, and there is the, the, the deal leader Kim Jong Un of North Korea, and he's hand, he's hand showing him something, and he's looking at it to, to read it and see what's going on here. See, there. Okay, and there's President Trump. President Trump watching this stuff. What's going on? Perhaps in Mar-a-Lago, watching this. This was on. This was on, reported on television. They showed. They showed this, a version of it. So here he is. Here are the two uh, people with him. His people. Two people. So former President Donald Trump watching leader Kim Jong Un speaking with officials. For two officials during observation of what their state media said was a hypersonic missile test on January 11, 2022. Given in the past, Trump boasted of his, quote, terrific relationship with the North Korean leader. And given in 2020, North Korea's foreign minister, Ri Sun Won, said on a state-run network, never again will we provide the U.S. chief executive, meaning the president, the president of the United States, with another package to be used for achievements without receiving any returns. So they felt they haven't received anything, and they gave him a kind of a licensed him to go out and say we're making tremendous progress. You know, if you recall that uh, the leader Kim Jong Un sent him a big, huge uh, letter. Remember the big letter, the, the giant letter, you know, that was in there, in, in a big, big envelope. You know, I know it was a big, it could have been a small little letter in a giant envelope. It was an envelope like you'd never seen before. It could have been the world's biggest envelope that was ever sent. You know, big envelope. You know. So, okay. So, so that anyway. And then, then Trump talked about the uh, love letters or something like that. They fell in love. You know, I, I, you know. So it was a whole big thing about that. So. I think Trump said, you know, it's amazing we found, we found, and then he, you know, and Trump walked into North, set foot in North Korea for a few minutes. So, you know, there was a lot of things that were going on there, a lot, a lot of steps that nobody has ever taken before, no other president ever did that. So, <laughs> you can't say he, he, he may have accomplished nothing, but you can't say he did nothing, <laughs> you know, it's kind of like that, you know. So, so anyway, so, so here we have now, uh, former, former President Trump watching this. Okay, and he's saying here, Biden ain't doing shit with North Korea. Fantastic idea. When I am reinstated in 2024, I'm going to invite Lita Kim to be my honored guest at Mar-a-Lago with all the slabs of roast prime rib he can eat. A prime return for no more F dot dot missiles. Okay, so next time it's going to give him a, a, a prime return because the, the foreign minister said without any returns, so he's going to give him a prime return with with these uh, slabs of a prime ribs of beef. Okay, at Mar-a-Lago. There he is. There goes the missile. There goes the hypersonic supposedly. Japan. Japan's a lot of islands, a lot of islands on Japan. There, I drew the islands there, surrounding. It's all one country, but the the country is is uh, composed of islands. Okay. And another shot of of leader Kim Jong Un and his two officials. Korea again with the missiles. 
the supposedly hypersonic missile. You know, I remember when I was a kid about the Sputnik that the Russians launched in 1957, and I was about, about seven, eight or so, whatever, and I, I remember looking up in the sky and seeing something going around and just walking and just following and looking it up. And I was with a friend and he said, that's, that's the Sputnik. And I said, holy smokes. You know, because we had been brought up to believe that America, nobody could, we're safest, this is the safest place in the world and nobody can get in there. I'm looking up and I see something moving. I said, holy smoke. So I said to myself, wow. You know, I, it left an impact on me. I never forget that. That it was, a, it was a dark, it was a night, and there was a few stars out, and there was one, this thing going on in the sky, and you could see it, the trajectory just moving along, you know? So, anyway, is this another Sputnik moment? I don't know, but I think we're too, anyway, I don't want to get into that. Just enjoy the, I hope you enjoyed the cartoon on that one. I try to just bring you some, make you think, and not, and not, and not kind of, focus on the negative, but, but focus on what's going on, and then you make the decision. I don't like to, to bring it on into you like that. So I'll leave it up to you. Okay, now here we have, okay, this is, this is a very good thing here. <laughs> here, we have, here we have here House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy, House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy, Trump nightmare. Okay, this is Kevin McCarthy here. He, he is now the uh, minority leader of the House, Senate minority, oh no, House minority, House minority leader in the House. Okay, and he wants that job back as, as he wants to be House minority. He, he wants to be the House majority leader when the Republicans take the House. He's now House minority leader, and there's a lot of fighting to try to remove him, and you got all these hard right people in the Republican Party want him out. And now you have, uh, so we see what's going to happen here. So he's very insecure about, about his position, and he had spoken against Trump right after the January 6th. So now since then he's been trying to make amends for that. You know, he kissed the ring of, uh, of Donald Trump. So he's been trying to do that, you know. I don't think Donald Trump has enough rings for him to kiss, to tell you the truth, you know? <laughs> okay, so anyway, House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy, Trump nightmare. So he's dreaming about Trump here. You see, he's, this is McCarthy there. There he is, he's, he's having his dream. McCarthy. In 2020, 2022, with Republicans back in control of the House, Trump supports Oath Keepers leader Stuart Rhodes to become House Speaker over him. Now, anybody can become House Speaker. You don't have to be an elected official to be Speaker of the House. And, and second of all, this guy Rhodes, he, I think he, went, he, got, had a, he had a law degree from Yale University. I mean, you look at him and you say, who's there, you know? But he had, actually has a law degree from Yale, you know? And he wrote a book. He wrote a, uh, he wrote a thesis about uh, John Adams a very uh, a detailed thesis in another school that he wrote about John Adams. So this this guy is an accomplished uh, scholar. He's not he's he's not he he he's he he's an accomplished scholar. That's what makes it scary. Is that you have people with high level intelligence who have gone over to this thing. You know, that's that's fantastic to think. He graduated from Yale University, and I think he even graduated summa cum laude. I read it from, a, from another school. I don't know if it was Yale or not, but this is a scholar, and here he is. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So I, yeah, you, you just think about that one. Okay, so in, in control of the House, Trump supports Oath Keepers leader. You don't hear that on the media. They don't want to tell you that. They don't want to drive it totally crazy, you know? They don't want to do that, because then you won't be able to watch TV. You'll be in somewhere, some institution, you know? So anyway, in 2022, Republicans back in control of the House. Trump supports Oath Keepers leader Stuart Rhodes to become House Speaker over McCarthy. Given McCarthy said from audio unearthed by CNN, that Trump admitted some responsibility for January 6th Capitol riots. So and McCarthy came out, he said, in a conversation to him, that Trump admitted some responsible for January 6th, which is a no-no for, for Trump to hear this, you know, because he sees himself fighting for, to, to, for the democracy and for the election. So to say he takes some responsibility, even, even a, a tiny bit, that's very, that's a no-no. So, so that, and Rhodes said he thinks Trump loved, and, and, and Rhodes, this guy, uh, Stuart Rhodes, 
he has said basically that he, this is what he said word for word, he thinks Trump loved his country and was, quote, a sincere America first person. Sincere America first person. Very sincere and a sincere America first person quote. It's a quote from, from uh, Yale scholar Stuart Rhodes. Okay? And then it goes, here goes, and here goes, I'll go take you back to McCarthy Dreaming. There's the, there's the Capitol, American flag. And there's Rhodes here, okay? And here's President Trump, thumbs up. There's Rhodes also, thumbs up. Okay, and he's saying here, this is Trump, first of all. Okay? And he's saying bad things. Bad things happened in the 2020 election, but in 2024, with Stuart Rhodes here as leader of the House, it's going to be a tremendous victory for Donald Trump. That will not be stolen, especially if it goes to the House for a vote. So that's what would happen. If you couldn't resolve it, it would go to the House for a vote, and that's what they wanted to do last time, but it never got there because people, responsible people, did the right thing. So it never, it would have a constitutional crisis would have been, you know? so. Could, you could have real a big problem in this country, you know. So, so I'm just saying here that that's not a joke about. But, you know, I do this as a vehicle to get you to think, and it's also uh, it kind of it's, it's making a joke. It's like trying to make a you know a uh, a, um, a, a a dinner out of um, potluck. You know, trying to make a good dinner for some you know good dinner of humor out of what's going on in a positive way, not to, to say well, the world's coming to an end. We can't do it. There's still plenty of time for America to straighten itself out and get together and do the right thing. That's kind of my message here, you know? Really, if there was no hope, I wouldn't even be doing this, I don't think, you know? It's, it's just that there is hope and there is time and we do have the capability of, of rising above this as a nation, as a people. And that's why I, th I thoroughly believe that. And that's, that's what motivates me to do this work. That. So anyway, especially if it goes to the House for a vote. And then here comes, there, here he comes, here comes Stuart Rhodes. And he, he's answering back. Here he is, there's Stuart Rhodes. Put his thumbs up. And then he says, President Trump, if even one, if it goes to the House for a vote, and he's saying, responding to that line, if it, Trump says, if it goes, even if it goes to a House for a vote, this man, here is going to take care of the situation for him, okay? President Trump, even if, if even one G, President Trump, if even one GOP member votes against you, I have a dynamite plan. I have a dynamite plan, you know? If even one vote, and there we go, that's one vote. It's a dynamite plan. These guys, there we go. Even one member, Republican member in the House, votes against you becoming president. If it goes this far, I have a dynamite plan. Dynamite. There you go. Okay. Keep in mind, this man has a law degree from Yale University. Wrote a brilliant thesis about John Adams. Graduated. Uh, summa cum laude from a from a reputable school. I don't know if he, I don't think we got that from, summa cum laude from Yale, but another reputable school. And there he is. Okay, I want to thank you, folks, for watching my uh, political cartoon countdown. I wish you all the best, and I keep saying to you, just keep thinking positive and make the right choices who you vote for. Don't vote, don't, you can't automatically say Democrat, I'm gonna vote for Democrat, Republican. You gotta look at the person, what they stand for, what their track record is, who they are, and, and then vote. And you have to, and no matter what kind of roadblocks that you, you, they put up, you gotta just follow the procedures and get it, and, and, get, and cut through, cut through, cut through the, the, the red tape and vote. You know, you take a day off from work if you have to and devote all the, the paperwork you need to do, whatever it takes to, to, to vote. 
you know, you go to the voting booth, there's a line, you have water in your back pocket or something in case, so nobody, you have to worry about anybody coming up and giving you water and then getting arrested, you know, in Texas or something like that. So you have the water there, you got your water, you got water bottle, you got your little, maybe a piece of chocolate or something like that to give you energy. So you, you, you're in there, okay? So uh, I want to thank you for watching my political cartoon countdown and I wish you all the best and I say God bless you and God bless America. I'll see you again, folks. Take care. Bye.